The problem with most producers, mixing engineers, and even songwriters isn't their skill level. And really anyone starting out in the music industry understands how easy it is to get bombarded with reviews and advertisements about the latest and greatest products. These big companies make it to where you don't even have to think twice about buying their product because of how great of a deal they make it out to be. This, more times than not, ends up as an unnecessary purchase for stuff that will end up collecting dust or taking up way too much space on your computer and leaving you to resell or delete non-refundable content that you don't even use. In this video, I will give you my solution that has helped me overcome this problem. Let's get started. When I first started building my immersive home studio, the first thing I had to get was a new interface. And with my full-time job outside of the studio, I was aiming to get something up and running as quick as possible. But also, I didn't want to spend more than $20,000 with what I had already put into in just speakers and stands and whatnot. So I went and bought an Apollo X16. It was the most affordable option for Dolby Atmos that didn't require purchasing multiple interfaces. It even came with all these cool plugins that I could use with the built-in DSP. And I feel like this is kind of where I screwed myself over. Now, don't get me wrong. This is a great quality interface for really anyone looking to get into music production. But in my opinion, it was lacking some features that would really help future-proof my studio. And that would give me the most flexibility with what equipment I already had. A couple of examples were the lack of ADAT and EQ calibration, which for my workflow was essential. Now I know I could have gotten some software or some extra hardware to fix this issue, but I wanted to keep all of my eggs in one basket. I ended up spending more money than I was originally intending for the sole purpose of having something that is going to last me for at least the next 10 or 20 years. And I've had some people tell me that you'll earn your money back and you can just buy an interface no problem and end up reselling the interface you already have. And this is very true. But in conclusion to the story I'm trying to tell here is that if I'm going to go ahead and put a heavy amount of an investment into the studio, I might as well do it right from the beginning. There's no use in me putting studio equipment that I'm not going to use in my setup and end up having to either refund or resell the product. And the solution for most people is just do your research on it and you'll be fine. But that really doesn't help you figure out what you need to do your research on. And before making a heavy investment like this, I would highly recommend asking yourself these questions. If you're a songwriter, can you write a good song before getting a new guitar? If you're a recording engineer, can I get the instrument to sound as good as possible at the source without having to buy external hardware? If you're a mixing and mastering engineer, can you use basic plugins to achieve the same goal without having to blow a bunch of money on a compressor that you're probably never going to use? Research your end goal, make a plan for a potential workflow, and figure out what you already have before <laughs> investing in new equipment which you probably don't need. And if you're anything like I was in my situation, you need to look into how you want to future-proof and not make any more heavy investments into your studio if you don't have to. Strengthening your skills before buying any extra equipment is the greatest information you will ever need. And it's something I wish I would have told myself a couple of years ago. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't just go and buy whatever gear, especially if you have the money to do so. Like I said in the beginning of the video, you will most likely be able to resell this equipment or even get a refund or something of the sort. And in my opinion, that really helps teach you a lesson in better preparing yourself to figure out what research you need to do next time you go to make a purchase. But anyways, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to check out some other things that I have on my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.